Coming up, we take a look at why masks are still a crucial component in fighting the battle of COVID-19. Stay tuned, you're watching Roar TV. Good afternoon, Avito. I'm Brianna Bibona, and today is Thursday, November 19th. With the break coming up, many of us have plans to go out and about, whether it's traveling to visit family or shopping for the holidays. But it's still vital that in doing those things, we keep in mind the COVID-19 protocols that health officials have established. Reporter Jason Mativier argues why wearing a mask is still just as important as it has been the past several months. The need to wear a mask extends from the grocery stores all the way to shopping plazas and right back into the classroom. With the restart of attendance in public schools, safety precautions have been put into place. So are these precautions effective? Yes, but only when followed. Although masks are mandatory, since there is no penalty currently imposed, not all students will obey. Whether it's due to being uncomfortable, having trouble speaking, eating, or even drinking, it's hard to say whether those masks will stay in place. So. What's the big deal? Well, there's already been a total of 18 cases at Vito High School. The reason COVID-19 originally spread so quickly was because those who were infected with the virus could transmit it without displaying any symptoms. Without knowing it, we were transmitting the virus all over the place. Even someone as beloved as Tom Hanks had it at the beginning of the pandemic. Tom Hanks, people. Everyone loves Tom Hanks. Although wearing a mask for the length of seven hours of school and or work may sound uncomfortable, while in public, masks should never be taken off. With the restrictions of social distancing becoming much weaker, in particular with the reopening of restaurants, it doesn't mean that the virus is any weaker. People might feel fatuated from the restrictions and want to loosen up, but doing so could be costly. We must continue to be vigilant by abiding by any and all precautions. I didn't order this. If I wore my mask and you wore yours, we can all dramatically decrease the rate of COVID-19 transmission. NJROTC is holding their annual Toys for Tots collection drive. The Toys for Tots program collects new, unwrapped toys during November and December each year and distributes those toys as Christmas gifts to less fortunate children in the community. Please consider donating a toy to this great program. All new toys can be dropped off in ROTC or the front office. The last day for donations is December 16th. The first French club meeting of the year will be on November 30th at 3 p.m. on Webex. You do not have to be in the French class to join the club. They will be discussing the club, possible t-shirt ideas, and playing some games. Please stop outside room 13008 and scan the QR code to join and fill out the interest form. Now, with Thanksgiving only a week away, many of you have plans to catch some football while enjoying some pumpkin pie. And in case you haven't been keeping up with how the NFL season has been going, reporter Maddox Nobel gets you up to speed on the latest in the NFL. This Sunday, the NFL experienced a few games with game-changing outcomes that can come into play later in the season. The Colts improved to 6-3 and, and gave the Titans their third straight loss. That results in the Colts taking first place and a possible tiebreaker against the Titans. Carey gets the touchdown after the block by E.J. Speed. The Buccaneers bounced back after an embarrassing loss with Ronald Jones running away with the win. He had a 98-yard touchdown, which is the longest in team history. Chase from behind. Does Jones have enough? Still on his feet. Ronald Jones, 98-yard touchdown. In the game of the week, Josh Allen led the Bills to a fourth-quarter comeback with a passing touchdown to Stephon Diggs with 30 seconds left. Looking, end zone, touchdown! Stephon Diggs with a grab! But with a miraculous Hail Mary attempt, Kyler Murray let the ball fly, and DeAndre Hopkins came down with the ball to win the game. Seconds, Murray heaves it downfield! It is, oh, it's caught! It is caught! DeAndre Hopkins! Miraculous! It's Murray Mack! 
magic! The Rams, led by Jared Goff, had an impressive win against the Seahawks. If the Seahawks want to improve on defense, they'll have a chance to make the playoffs. Another one for Darius Williams, his second of the game. And we'll the Saints stay hot with a win over the 49ers. Drew Brees left the game in the third quarter with a collapsed lung and multiple broken ribs. Jameis Winston came in to close the game and will be the starter for the foreseeable future. The Patriots shocked the Ravens with a dominant def defense performance by containing Lamar Jackson. The loss for the Ravens caused them to be tied for second place in the AFC North. Burkhead will make the catch in the end zone. Once again, the Steelers came away with a dominant win over the Bengals. The Steelers improved to 9-0 for the first time in team history. Hey Oviedo, I'm Riley Finnegan here with today's O-Town Update. On Friday, boys JV soccer tied with Haggerty 1-1 and varsity was defeated 1-0. Over the weekend, Sam Austin ran at the Cross Country State Championship in Tallahassee. He finished 33rd overall with a time of 16.47. On Tuesday, both varsity and JV girls soccer teams defeated Lake Brantley. Varsity won 4-0 with Ray Lugo scoring two goals and Valentina Amaral and Peyton Massey each scoring once. JV won 6-0. Last night, boys JV soccer tied with Lake Brantley 2-2 and varsity won 3-1, with Alejandro Trujillo scoring two goals, Trey Matchner scoring one goal, and Lorenzo Amaral assisting twice. Tonight, girls soccer travels to Winter Springs with start times at 5 and 7, and girls basketball hosts Haggerty at 5.30 and 7. That's all for sports today. Go Lions! That's all we have for you today, Oviedo. Have a great day, and go Lions!